Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, from a scientific standpoint, when you look at the cannabis plant and what's been going on in Mexico with the cartels and, the, and their efforts down there to produce the cannabis that they bring here north, north above the border, you know, which is responsible for about 60 to 65% of their revenues. But uh, from a scientific standpoint, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, sadly enough, a lot of interbreeding amongst these uh, inferior variety species of cannabis uh, that they've been mixing with these uh, varieties that used to come from Mexico that were really good varieties of cannabis. Uh, most of the stuff coming across the border right now is, is I, I don't even understand why we even go to the efforts of this this country to with the Drug Enforcement Agency and all of Homeland Security and this $100 billion price tag that they have going after it. The stuff they're chasing after is worthless. It's it, from a cannabis smoker standpoint, it would be just something they would go to as a last resort compared to what uh, the Americans can produce and do produce. So... But when you look at the uh, the scientific angle of this and all the the cannabis plant, you know there's there's many species around the world. There's over 300 Indian varieties alone, and uh, due to the efforts of a lot of different growers and stuff, uh, these these varieties have spanned into the thousands now, and this is due to conscientious growing and and people who have a sensibility about themselves and and obviously like to grow plants and all but but also the uh, expertise within themselves to know that they're going to try to improve the species not take it down and what's been going on in mexico i'm afraid is that the old growers back from the late 60s and early 70s that were producing a lot of the cannabis that was coming into the united states i believe these people have either died or have uh, gone out of commission from the cartel in one way or the other, but uh, and I believe that these new replacement growers that they have either are confused about how to grow cannabis, or, or like I say, from a scientific standpoint, the interbreeding has got to a point that that now that the THC levels and what's there is very weak, and that's what happens when you cross two species of cannabis. It's only the weaker variety of the two improves. You never take a variety and improve on its THC level in a crossing if it's the higher of the two crossings. That seems to be a misnomer a lot of, among a lot of people. Now there are a lot of flavor attributes and stuff that you can that from different crossings that come into it and all, but the the highest percent THC of the of the one species that's the highest, that's the highest you're gonna get. And the weaker one of the two is the one that will improve. Of course that's that's in a normal district bell curve distribution when you look at the seeds and all. But it's really sad that down in Mexico that from the four or five really good cannabis varieties that they used to grow, like the Acapulco Gold, the Meshmacan, the Oaxacan, and the Guerin, all of those varieties of cannabis back in the 70s were excellent cannabis varieties, and they produced very well in that soil down in Mexico without any type of fertilizers or sprays or anything. They've got, they're very blessed with a lot of good soil down there, for, and particularly for growing the cannabis herb. And um, it's really sad that the, that these younger growers obviously have done a bunch of interbreeding with some inferior varieties that have cropped up here and there just for, for lack of nothing else, I guess, to find the amount of seed they need to plant. And these crossings have, have done the damage to the, uh, the pure varieties. And I'm sure these strains still exist down there in their pure form, hopefully. Hopefully there are some people down there that are conscientious enough and realize the importance of it. I mean, it'd be the equivalent of taking, uh, say you wanted to cross two different types of tomatoes, and you had one really good type of tomato variety that produced real good, had a really good color, good flavor and all that, and you wanted to cross it with another one that the plant itself, you weren't even sure if it would even produce tomatoes, and then when it did produce them, they were just this horrible rancid taste, yet you're going to go ahead and do the crossing because you think you're going to improve the variety of the really good one you have. It's about that type of analogy, what's been going on with the interbreedings of these inferior varieties with these better known cannabis varieties that were down in southern Mexico and along the coast there. So I, I think that the scientific community needs to wake up. This isn't just a, you know, we're not just, y'all have turned this thing into some sort of fiasco circus through the DEA and the government and Homeland Security now and all, and, and we really need to, uh, to, you know, bear back to the scientific community and say, what, 
what, what's going on here? Are we really going to allow this to continue to happen? I mean, what if this was going on with the food crops around the, around the world and all, and, and we crossed all these inferior varieties that didn't produce food and all? Uh, it'd, be, it'd be devastating. And this is what's going on with the cannabis market in Mexico. And I suspect that uh, this could easily happen around the world, but fortunately, like I said, and you can look at the uh, people who participate in the Cannabis Cup, Cup there in Amsterdam each year and all, and, and of course all the growers of, in all of the different states that have allowed some of that activity to occur. Uh, at least we do have people out there that have enough sense to realize that we need to keep these strains pure. And you know, if, we, if you are doing crossings and all, make sure it's one that is to a benefit and not one to take a species down because I feel like that is what's going on in Mexico and I feel like that's why the cannabis of, that's coming across the border that's not being confiscated by Homeland Security or the DEA is a very very low percent THC it's trashed out it's just uh, the cartels are doing all they can to, to get those loads across the border and all and I really don't much see the effort uh, somebody needs to take them a lot of good seed down there and let them start over because apparently Somebody's goofing up bad, but uh, I thank you for joining the cannabis.